In this part, I want to talk about uh, urine uh, transportation and uh, storage. Um, I talked about ureter before for you, and you know that each ureter can transport urine from the renal pelvis uh, to our uh, urinary bladder. The movement of urine uh, in the ureter uh, is by peristaltic movement, peristaltic wave. We have some hydrostatic pressure which can help this uh, urine to come down and also the gravity help it to come down. We need to know that we don't have any anatomical valve uh, at the opening of ureter to the urinary bladder. When the bladder becomes full of urine, uh, the muscles which we have in the wall of bladder can make pressure on the opening and they can uh, close um, the opening of the ureter to the bladder and prevent its backflow. The bladder uh, is a hollow, distensible muscular organ, and the capacity of the bladder is about 700 to 800 milliliters. In this picture, you can see the bladder, the ureter, and the urethra in the female. Here, you can see the bladder, this, the sac-like structure. These two tubes which come down are the ureters. The ureters come and pass the wall of bladder about one centimeter, and then they open in the posterior uh, wall of the bladder. These two structures, these two openings are the opening of ureters uh, to the bladder. Inside the bladder, you can see many rugae. The rugae are the holes which can help expansion of urinary bladder when it feels. And um, the muscles which you have in the wall of bladder is a thick muscle, and we have a specific name for this muscle. This muscle is called detrosor muscle, and this muscle uh, can go to contraction when we want to do urination. In the posterior uh, wall of the bladder, from inside, you can see a triangle shape structure, which we call it trigon. This trigon has three corners. Two corners are the corner of the ureters, right and left ureter, and the other corner is the um, opening of the urethra. In this trigon, we don't have any folds, we don't have any rugae. When the urinary bladder and urethra attach together, between them we have the orifice, which we call it internal urethral orifice, and this orifice is protected by uh, a, the sphincter, which we call it internal urethral sphincter. And this sphincter, which you can see it here, uh, can uh, control the opening and closing of the urethra out of our control. Then you can see the urethra. This is the urethra. One part of urethra is located inside the body, this part, and one part of urethra is out of the body. When the urethra wants to pass the wall of the body, which is here, you can see the other valve. The valve is called external urethral sphincter, and it can control the opening and closing of uh, this opening uh, under our control. So uh, during potty training, we teach uh, our babies, our kids, how they can control this sphincter uh, to do urination. And in the last part of the urethra, which is out of the body, both in male and female, we have external urethral orifice. This is the histology of uh, the ureter. 
in the ureter, uh, you have um, all the parts which you have in the wall of uh, all tubular structures. Uh, first, uh, you can see the epithelium here. This part is the epithelium, and you need to know that the epithelium of the um, ureter, urinary bladder, and some parts of urethra are transitional epithelium. And I will show you this epithelium in the next slides. After the epithelium, we have the next part here, uh, which is lamina propria submucosa. In this part, in the lamina propria submucosa, we don't have uh, the muscularis mucosa to divide lamina propria and submucosa. So these two parts are combined together. The lamina propria is loose connective tissue and the tonica submucosa is denser connective tissue. So here uh, we don't have any muscularis mucosa. And after that, we have the next part, which is tonica muscularis or muscularis externa. In the tonica muscularis or muscularis externa, we have two layers of muscles, but the orientation of the muscles are opposite to digestive system. Uh, the orientation of the muscles is inner longitudinal and outer circular muscle. And the last layer, which you have in the wall, is called tonica adventitia. And here you can see the tonica adventitia. So you have uh, first uh, epithelium, transitional epithelium. After that, you have lamina propria submucosa. Then you have a muscularis externa and the tonica adventitia at the end. This is the histology of uh, ureter, and all the informations are here for you. Between uh, the transitional epithelium, uh, we have some scattered goblet cells. These goblet cells can secrete mucus, and the foamy appearance of the urine uh, is uh, due to the mucus which is secreted <coughs> by these goblet cells. I talked about this structure for you. And now I want to talk about the histology of uh, urinary uh, bladder for you. Uh, first, uh, if you look at this picture, you can see the epithelium. The epithelium is transitional, and you know what is the meaning of transitional epithelium. In transitional epithelium, our cells are pillow shape and we have more than one layer of the cells and the other key for identification of transitional is checking the um, binucleated cells which are scattered between uh, the uh, apical layer of the cells. Uh, so uh, here you can see the transitional epithelium first after that you have lamina propria submucosa and then you have thick layer of muscle here. This muscle, as I told you before, is detrosor muscle. This is a very intermingled muscle. We have three layers of muscle, inner and outer longitudinal and middle circular muscle, uh, but we, have, we call it detrosor. And the last layer is tonica adventitia, and we have many fat or adipocytes uh, in this part. We have a reflex for urination reflex. The process of urination is controlled by this reflex. And uh, it's started from the stretch receptors which we have in the wall of the bladder. Uh, when the bladder becomes full of uh, urine, when the bladder contains about 200 milliliters of urine, this uh, stretch receptor becomes stimulated. When the amount of urine increases and increases, we have a more frequency of uh, this uh, stimulation for our uh, stretch receptors. 
and after that uh, the information uh, can um, this uh, information can make the action potential this action potential can go to the spinal cord to the sacral region and then by the ascending fibers it can go to the higher center of the brain and the pons and also the cerebral <clears throat> And uh, then the result come back again by the spinal cord, by the parasympathetic fibers to the urinary bladder in the pelvic nerves. And uh, it can make pressure uh, on the urinary bladder uh, and rapidly uh, we can um, empty the urinary bladder. Uh, for the micturation reflex, uh, you need to know that we have um, um, two process. Uh, first, the external urethral sphincter, which is under our control, should become open. And after that, the internal urethral sphincter opens and we can do urination. At the end of urination, we have about 10 milliliter of urine uh, which remain in the bladder. Uh, the urine is acidic in its uh, nature and this acidity prevents growth of bacteria uh, in the urinary bladder. And uh, here you can see the differences between the male and female urethras, which I will talk about it in the next picture. Uh, this is uh, the male urethra. Uh, here you can see the male urethra. These two structures are the ureters. Here you can see the urinary bladder. Inside bladder you have many rugae. You can see the muscle of the wall, which is the trosor muscle. Uh, and you have this trigon, uh, which has three uh, more, um, sorry, corners here. Two of them are the opening of ureter and one of them is the opening of urethra. And after that, uh, the urethra starts. Here you can see internal urethral orifice and internal urethral sphincter, which is involuntary. Beneath the bladder in male, we have prostate gland. This prostate gland can circle the urethra from outside. And the urethra pass through this part. This part of urethra, which pass through the prostate gland, is called prostatic urethra. After that, the urethra should pass the wall of the body. This part of urethra, which is located in the wall of our body is called membranous part of urethra. And after that, the urethra is located in the penis and we call it penile urethra or a spongy urethra. So we have three different parts for the urethra. The first part of urethra is called prostatic urethra, it's here. The next part of urethra is called membranous urethra, which is located in the wall of our body. And the last part of urethra is called penile urethra or a spongy urethra, which is located in the penis. The other thing which is important to know is this. Here you have internal urethral sphincter. And in this part, we have external urethral sphincter. And the last part of urethra is called external urethral orifice. Don't make mistake between orifice and sphincter. A sphincter means valve, and the orifice is the opening. And this is the urethra in the female. As you see here, the urethra in the female is very short, but still it has three parts. One part is inside the body, one part past the body wall, and one part is located outside. Um, this wall of our body um, is called urogenital diaphragm. The name of this body wall is urogenital diaphragm. And in the female, you need to know that, again, um, here you have, let me draw it for you. You have 
internal urethral sphincter and here you have external urethral sphincter in the female the urethra is about three to four centimeter and in the male it's about 20 centimeter and as i told you before in the male it has prostatic part membranous part and the spongy or penile urethra the epithelium of the urethra uh, is a transitional epithelium uh, at the beginning at the proximal part and we have a transition here first this transitional epithelium changed to a stratified and pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and then it changed to a stratified squamous epithelium and continue with our skin from outside so from transitional epithelium we have gradual change to become a stratified squamous epithelium and the internal urethral sphincter um, is out of our control it's involuntary a smooth muscle and the external urethral sphincter can voluntarily um, control our um, urination and it becomes relaxed when we want to do uh, micturation or urination this is the anatomy and histology of the parts which can transport urine for us